Uh, let's get started. Welcome to a practical introduction to integer linear programming. Uh, I'm Igor First. I live here in Columbus. I'm co-founder and CTO of Mobikit. Uh, we are a uh, very, very early stage venture-backed software startup. Uh, we are building tools to empower the use of data in mobility. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about integer linear programming because, uh, to my delight, this is actually something that uh, came up in some work that we were doing earlier this year for a customer, and I thought uh, some other folks might be interested in, uh, in learning a little bit more about it. Um, so here's what the next half hour is going to look like. Um, we'll start by talking about what is integer linear programming. I'm going to call it ILP, usually, to you know, say fewer syllables. Uh, I'm going to talk about what it is and what kind of problems it's good for. I'm going to talk about the vehicle fleet assignment problem, which is the particular problem that we encountered. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to phrase it as an ILP problem and then use Google's OR, OR tools library to solve it, which is an open source Python library. Um, and then time permitting, at the end, um, I'll uh, spend uh, just a couple of minutes talking about um, how our problem and ILP in general uh, are a great illustration of the fact that solving real world data problems um, is as much art as it is science. So um, if that sounds good, um, let's get started with just a, a little bit of history. Uh, integer linear programming is a variant of linear programming. There was a really good talk on linear programming yesterday. Um, if you guys went to that talk and you're also here, uh, rest assured you will see lots of new things, so don't worry about that. Um, but both of these fields are actually part of operations research, which you can define uh, kind of broadly as uh, the study of rigorous quantitative methods for optimal decision making. Um, and modern operations research developed uh, during World War II uh, when people had a lot of um, very high stakes decision making they needed to do uh, and they wanted to do it optimally. Um, so people an had to answer questions like how to route supply lines um, through Europe or like how to optimally select bombing targets and things like that. And they developed a lot of extremely useful um, uh, quantitative methods to answer those kinds of questions. And in the decades after World War II, uh, there were applications in manufacturing, planning, routing, scheduling, across many, many, many different domains. Um, a little bit of personal history. Uh, I learned about uh, uh, operations research from my wife, Rachel. Uh, that's us uh, in grad school during our salad days. Um, Rachel was actually um, in a graduate program in operations research. Um, and I was in a different program, but she taught me a whole lot about it. Um, and um, for that, I'm uh, very grateful. And Rachel will continue making some appearances throughout the stock uh, to help us along our ILP journey. OK, great. So um, ILP, what kind of problems can you solve with it? Um, and before I give you kind of a general statement, let me just give you some examples, some concrete examples that I hope will motivate things a little bit. So, um, so here's a great uh, problem. It's the um, employee shift assignment problem, um, kind of a classic ILP problem. So uh, here you have a list of work shifts. You're an employer. You have a list of work shifts. You have a group of employees. You want to schedule employees for all the shifts. Uh, while respecting uh, employee availability and, of course, minimizing cost. You're the business owner and you're hard-nosed and you want to minimize cost. Here's another example. Um, this is uh, generally called the facility location problem. So uh, imagine uh, you want to build uh, some factories to make some widget um, and you have a large list of potential factory sites. You need to select uh, some subset of those sites to actually build those factories. And you want to uh, choose those sites in a way that minimizes the operating cost for the factories, but also minimizes the transportation cost for the widgets that you're going to be sending out of these factories. Uh, another very classic ILP problem. Um, here's another good one. We'll actually dig pretty deep into this one. This is the vehicle fleet assignment problem. Um, you have a list of, uh, you have a, a fleet of vehicles, and you have a bunch of routes that you need those vehicles to drive. Um, so you want to assign a vehicle to each route in a way that maximizes uh, fleet efficiency and utilization. So you can think of these routes as um, uh, you know, like transporting people. So imagine a route is just a group of people that has to go from point A to point B, uh, and you have a fleet of vehicles. You want to figure out which vehicles to use for what route um, in a way that is uh, most efficient. Great. So um, the thing that all these problems have in common is that, uh, kind of broadly speaking, they're optimization problems that require making assignment decisions while being subject to constraints. So you're making assignment decisions. You're assigning employees to shifts or vehicles to routes. Um, and there are constraints around which assignments you may or you may not make. Uh, and, you're, and you have some optimization you're trying to do in the sense of uh, you have a definition of what's a good assignment and what's a bad assignment. And you want the best possible assignment according to some, you know, some metric. So broadly speaking, uh, these are the kinds of problems that, that ILP is good for. Um, but of course, there's a little bit of a catch uh, you can only use ILP if you can represent your problem in a particular mathematical form. 
um, and I'm going to get to the details of what that particular mathematical form is. Um, but before I do that, um, I'll just say that if you can represent your assignment problem in this particular mathematical form, that's pretty good because you can use an ILP solver in a totally black box fashion. Um, there are IP, IP, ILP solvers, open source and proprietary. You kind of pull off the shelf. You put your problem in the special form. You put it in the solver, and the solver will give you a, an optimal assignment, um, an assignment that is provably optimal, um, you know, with respect to the problem that you had that you had fed it, which is pretty great. Um, okay, so what is this particular mathematical form? Let's talk about it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what it is, um, and I'm, and I'm going to use the employee shift scheduling problem uh, to kind of help uh, define this. Um, and then um, after that, we're going to actually put the we're going to go back to the vehicle fleet um, assignment problem, and we're going to uh, work through putting it into this particular mathematical form. Okay, but what is it? Um, so let's say you have an assignment problem, or you're assigning resources to categories, just fairly generally speaking. Um, so you start, uh, in order to put it in this particular mathematical form, you start by defining a variable, XRC, for every pair of resources, I'm sorry, for every pair of resource R and category C, for every possible pair. Um, and these variables are, al are allowed to take only two values, zero or one. And if their value is one, that means um, you're assigning resource R to category C, and if value is zero, it means you're not. So for example, uh, with the employee shift uh, assignment problem, um, there's an XRC for every combination of employee and shift. So for example, there's employee Igor, a shift that's first shift on Tuesday, uh, and then there's a, val a variable XRC that corresponds to that pair. Its value is one if we're going to have Igor work that shift. Its value is zero otherwise. Great. So uh, you define all these variables. Um, and now uh, you get to use ILP if two things are true, if, there are two, um, uh, if these two conditions hold. Condition number one is all the constraints in your problem, or all the constraints around the assignments that you're allowed to make, you have to be able to write them as linear inequalities over these variables. So for example, if one of our constraints is we don't want to make people like close the store one night and then immediately open it the next morning, you would write that constraint like this. So uh, x Igor last shift Monday plus x Igor first shift Tuesday is the most one. Um, and this represents that constraint accurately because these are all zero, one valued variables, right? So what this constraint is saying, we can both both of these assignments cannot be true. We're not going to allow that. So you have to be able to write every single constraint as a linear inequality. Uh, the second the second condition is the function that you're trying to optimize, either minimize or maximize, uh, either either works. The function you're trying to optimize, you have to be able to write it as a linear sum of these variables. So for example, um, here uh, in the employee shift assignment problem. And say we want to minimize cost, uh, then we can say, OK, write out this very, very large sum that just takes um, uh, all these variables, multiplies them by um, the cost uh, of uh, assigning an employee to a shift, um, and then adds them all up. And so because these are all 0, 1 variables, we know that taking this sum um, over all possible employees, um, that's just going to be the total cost of the employees that you've assigned to all your shifts. Uh, and so you can write it as a linear sum, and then uh, you can just say, I just want to minimize this. I just want to mi minimize this total quantity. So if both of these conditions hold, then congratulations. Um, this is the mathematical form required to be able to use an ILP solver. Um, and so you can just put your problem in this form, feed it into the solver, get an assignment back, and, um, uh, and, and lean back in, in quiet satisfaction. Um, great. So. Um, that was kind of a high-level example, so now I want to go deeper with the vehicle fleet assignment problem. Um, and this is the problem that we had to solve. So I'm going to give you a, kind of a simplified version of the problem that we ended up uh, solving for one of our clients. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to encode it into this form. Um, and then I have a little notebook where um, we actually take that uh, representation, we fit it to a solver, and we get a solution. That's great. All right. So vehicle fleet assignment. Um, in this assignment, we're assigning vehicles to routes. Um, and again, a route is just a, a group of people that needs to be transported. So a group of people, fixed size, going from point A to point B. Um, the optimization we wanted to make is uh, we want to minimize wasted capacity. So we want to use the smallest available vehicles for these routes. You know, if a route only has two people, uh, don't send a very large bus to transport those two people because it's inefficient and, uh, you know, you waste fuel that way if you send a vehicle that's too big. Okay. So um, to be concrete, uh, let's just imagine this very small 
simple instance of the vehicle fleet assignment problem. Um, so we have four routes. Um, this is kind of a, a Gantt-like view of, uh, uh, of the routes uh, with respect to the time of day. So we have these two routes in the morning uh, with eight and, and six passengers, and then a couple routes in the afternoon with three and two passengers. So we have these four routes we need to service. We have three vehicles in our fleet, a sedan that seats four, not including the driver, a van that seats six, and a bus that, six, that seats 10. So um, how do you assign these vehicles to these routes? Uh, we're gonna uh, write up all of our constraints. We're gonna figure out what our constraints are, write them all up, and then feed that problem to our solver. So let's think about the constraints. Um, one very reasonable constraint is you wanna assign a vehicle to every route. You don't wanna leave anybody hanging. You wanna make sure that every route gets a vehicle. Um, and for the sake of simplicity, let's just say that um, we wanna assign exactly one vehicle to each route. Um, one vehicle just to serve a route. Okay, so that's the first kind of constraint that we wanna apply. Um, and we're go I'm gonna call those coverage constraints. We wanna make sure that all of our routes are covered. Okay, the second constraint is um, obviously you can't use any vehicle for any route. Some vehicles are too small for certain routes. So uh, this is the second type of constraint. Um, I'm gonna call these capacity constraints. You have to make sure that the vehicle you, that you assign has sufficient capacity to handle the route. Um, the third type of constraint just says, all right, if we have two routes that overlap in time, like these two here or these two here, we can't use the same vehicle for both because that vehicle cannot be in two places at the same time. And so this last set of constraints, overlap constraints is what I'm gonna call them, um, just says uh, you can't assign a vehicle uh, to two routes if those two routes overlap in time. Um, so three types of constraints. Now, um, I'm gonna stop there because at this point, this problem is like realistic enough. Now in practice, you can imagine lots of other types of constraints. Uh, like maybe not every vehicle is available at any time of day, um, or maybe uh, you can't assign a vehicle uh, to do two routes, the two routes are very far away from each other, they're not gonna get to them in time. Um, so all that is true, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just stop here, because this is realistic enough to move forward. Okay, great. So we have these constraints. How are we gonna write these constraints as linear inequalities? We need to do that in order, be, in order to be able to feed this problem to a solver. So first we start with our variables, right? So we have four routes, three vehicles, which means we have 12 variables, one for each uh, vehicle route pair. Um, and again, uh, in any assignment, um, these variables are gonna have zero, one values. And for example, if X van three is one, that means we're gonna assign the van to route three. And if it's zero, that means we're not. We're gonna use something else for route three because we've got our 12 variables. So let's start uh, capturing our constraints as linear inequalities over these variables. We'll start with coverage constraints. Um, uh, coverage constraints say that every route should have exactly one vehicle assigned to it. Um, and uh, these look like this. There's one constraint for every route, and the constraint says when you add up all these x's over all the vehicles for this one particular route, it has to equal one. Um, and so this does exactly what we want it to, again, because these are zero, one valued variables. So what this constraint says, for example, is for route one, only one of these can be one. Uh, and in fact, precisely one of these must be one. So we have one of these for every route. These are the coverage constraints. Capacity constraints. Um, a vehicle assigned to a route must have sufficient capacity. So really this just says we need to identify which combinations of vehicles and routes are forbidden and then just force those uh, variables to be zero. So the sedan, for example, um, can't serve routes one or two, it's too small. And so we're gonna say in every assignment, we, these ha have to be zero. Uh, similarly, the van cannot serve route one, it's too small, so it gets, uh, it gets one of these as well. Um, if you've been paying attention, um, you'll notice that I spoke in terms of linear inequalities uh, in the very beginning, but I'm using equalities here. Um, of course, you can create a equality with two linear inequalities, and so that's why I'm loosely just using equalities all over the place. So if I want something to be equal to something else, I can say that something has to be less than or equal to that thing and also greater than or equal to that thing. So, um, so in, uh, you know, in practice under the hood, uh, you can give an ILP solver a bunch of equalities and it'll just turn them to two inequalities. So just wanted to um, get that out of the way. Great, okay. So uh, we have one last set of constraints here. Overlap constraints. These are actual inequalities, finally. Um, and these say that two routes that overlap in time cannot use the same vehicle. And so we have two pairs of routes here that overlap in time, one and two, and three and four. Uh, and so this, this cluster of three constraints is for routes one and two, and it's just saying that for every vehicle, add a constraint that says you can't use this vehicle on both of these routes. Um, and similarly, for 
routes three and four, add a constraint that says you can't use, um, uh, for every vehicle, add a constraint that says you can't use this vehicle on both of these routes. So we get six of these. Great. Now all that's left is the function to minimize. Uh, and this is the function we're gonna minimize. Uh, now the constants here uh, are the capacities of the vehicle. Uh, and this looks just like um, a big mess of uh, variables and constants, but if you stare at this for about 30 seconds, I'm not gonna give you that 30 seconds right now, but if, if you stare at this for about 30 seconds, you'll see that each row in this very large sum is just the capacity of the vehicle that's assigned to that particular route. And this is four rows, one for each route. Um, and so this whole, uh, this whole linear sum in total is just kinda the total aggregate, aggregate capacity that we're deploying for all these routes. Um, and again, we wanna minimize that because we wanna avoid sending uh, vehicles that are too big to serve routes that uh, don't need a vehicle that big. Um, so we're just gonna say, just add all these up and this will minimize the total capacity that we've deployed. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so this is what our problem looks like um, in, in this particular ILP friendly mathematical form. Um, so now let's switch over to uh, a notebook and I can show you guys how to use OR tools um, to, uh, to solve this problem. You see this okay? Okay, great. Um, uh, this stuff is gonna be online, by the way. I'll have a link at the end of my uh, presentation, so if you wanna see the notebook and the slides, um, they'll be up on GitHub. Um, okay, great, so OR Tools is a Python library. They have a great uh, website with great documentation. Uh, it's maintained by Google, um, and uh, they have solvers for all kinds of very interesting problems in operations research. Uh, obviously, we're just gonna focus on uh, this ILP solver here. So um, using it is pretty straightforward, um, and the fact that it's written in Python actually makes it highly usable. Um, first thing you can do is, of course, I'll run this for you guys, uh, you import uh, OR tools and you tell it to instantiate a solver. Great, uh, first thing you gotta give that solver is your set of variables. Um, and here we have 12 variables, one for each vehicle route pair. Uh, you just call solver.intvar to, to define uh, an integer valued variable. Um, and we're gonna say it must be between zero and one, so in other words, it has to be either zero or one. Um, so we are going to instantiate these variables, great. Um, and now we just add all of our constraints to the solver. Um, and this is really nice because you can write, this is Python, so you can write these expressions over your variables um, in a very human readable form. Uh, and then they'll evaluate to some magical object and you can pass that object to solver.add. And this will just add um, all the constraints um, to, uh, to the solver. So here we have our four coverage constraints. Uh, here we have our three capacity constraints, exactly the ones that we just went over on the slides, uh, and our six uh, overlap constraints. So let's all add all of them. We have a total of 13 constraints, great. And the last thing we need is the, um, the um, function to be minimized. Um, and again, just like we saw on the slides, it's just gonna be this very large sum over all the variables where um, we're multiplying by the capacities of, uh, of the vehicles here. So we're gonna add that as well. We're gonna tell the solver to minimize this expression, this linear expression. Okay, and that's it. We've given it everything we've got. We're ready to solve. Um, and so we just call solver.solve. We verify that our assignment is optimal. Um, and then we print out um, all of the assignments. So we're just gonna print out all the variables whose value is one. Um, and this tells us that we're gonna assign the bus to route one, we're gonna assign the van to routes two and three, we're gonna assign the sedan to route four. So it looks like this, um, which is, uh, you know, if you had kind of eyeballed this problem, you could probably figure this out. It's a pretty small scale problem. Um, uh, but of course, the nice thing is that you can solve much bigger problems where the solution is less obvious. And again, the solution you get back is mathematically optimal. Um, you know, given the formulation that you presented, it's the best possible solution. Um, it's not always unique. There might be uh, multiple solutions that are equally optimal, but it's guaranteed to give you a, uh, one of those optimal solutions if there happens to be more than one. Great, okay, so, um, so life is pretty good, right? You have this assignment problem, uh, you can formulate it in this particular way, uh, you just give it to a solver, solver gives you an optimal assignment, and everything's fantastic. Um, unfortunately, life is not good, life is hard and full of pain, uh, and the problem here is that ILP is actually an NP-complete problem, and if you guys remember your, um, your CS theory, that means it's a problem uh, for which efficient algorithms uh, probably just don't exist at all, and so, even though a lot of very smart people spend a lot of time and effort uh, figuring out how to make ILP solvers as fast as possible, um, they're never really gonna be that fast. Um, and all the ones uh, that are available, both proprietary and, uh, and open source, um, 
they kind of hit a wall even for moderately sized problems because the problem they're trying to solve is fundamentally um, intractable in a really formal sense. So um, we actually ran into this um, pretty quickly when we tried to solve the actual problem that was on our hands. Um, this is a, a depiction of the kind of fleet assignment problem that we were dealing with. Uh, this is one day in the operation of this private shuttle service. Um, and here we're talking about 102 routes, a fleet of 43 vehicles, and about 1,000 pairs of overlapping routes. Um, and this results, um, if you just kind of like go through the naive process that we just went through, um, in almost 50,000 constraints, uh, which is large for an ILP solver. Um, and so what happens here is that we hit a wall actually really quickly. Um, if you, uh, th this is a little chart that shows how fast it took to solve subproblems. Uh, they just restricted the number of overlapping route pairs. So you can see between 100 and 500 overlapping route pairs, you know, we, there's an increase that looks uncomfortably exponential. Um, and our, our problem, again, had about 1,000 overlapping route pairs. And then between 5 and 600, there's just some kind of weird phase transition where I just kind of stopped waiting after 90 minutes and just didn't finish. Um, and this is what happens all the time. This is just the name of the game when you're working with ILP. Um, you know, you're using the solver in a black box fashion. The solver is trying to solve a problem that's MP complete. Um, you know, the the increase in um, in the amount of, the amount of time it takes to solve a problem goes up very quickly, and then sometimes you just hit a wall where it's just not going to end in any reasonable amount of time. So what do you do? What do you do in this situation? Um, well, um, what you have to do uh, is be very very clever about exploiting the structure of the specific problem that you're trying to solve. Um, there's only so far you can get by just you know kind of like performing a general transformation and feeding it into a general purpose solver. Um, and this is something that um, happens all the time in ILP, and I'll have an, a, another great example of that um, in a few slides. Uh, and it's also something that we had to do in order to be able to solve this problem at all. And so um, one thing we noticed uh, is that uh, the distribution of these routes is pretty bimodal. Um, this is a shuttle service that generally just takes people to and from work. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of trips in the morning here going to work, a lot of trips in the evening going home from work. Uh, and so uh, for almost all days, it's actually pretty easy to just kind of like split the day in half, solve the individual sub-problems for the first part and the second part of the day, and then combine those into a solution for the entire day. Um, and that's straightforward because, you know, it's pretty bimodal. There isn't, there isn't a lot of routes that just, you know, span those two parts of the day. So that made it feasible to just kind of solve the sub-problems, which, you know, just took a few minutes, and then combine them. Um, and uh, uh, and we were in a good place. Um, and again, this is, um, this is a, something that happens all the time in ILP, and is also, like I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, a great illustration of the fact that um, you know, when you're solving real world, real world data problems, um, you, know, you have to pay very close attention to the structure of your problem because general tools really only take you so far. Um, so let me give you another example that is really great. This is one of Rachel's favorite papers. Um, this is a, a paper about a fleet assignment problem, but it's actually uh, an airline fleet assignment problem. Um, so some folks at Georgia Tech were asked by an airline, um, we don't know, who, they don't say who it is, but it was probably Delta, um, just because they're also in Atlanta. So um, some airline, probably Delta, um, asked them to solve this uh, vehicle fleet assignment problem for their planes. Right? They just wanted to make sure that they are assigning their planes to their routes as optimally as possible. Um, and uh, this is a really interesting paper because um, these folks at Georgia Tech, they wanted to make the problem as realistic as possible. They wanted to make it very useful for their client. Um, and so they put in all of the relevant constraints. And there's a lot of these. So the airline cares about um, constraints around passenger demand, revenue, seating capacity, fuel costs, crew size, availability of maintenance. Um, you know, they wanted this to be as realistic as possible, which results in uh, tons of constraints, tons of really interesting constraints. And they say in the paper here, uh, using standard default options of a mathematical programming system, we cannot come close to solving problems of the size that are required. Uh, they're working with 150 city, 2,500 flight um, assignment problem, which is like, this isn't big data, right? I mean, you know, we're talking about like hundreds and thousands of things, right? But for ILP, this is a very big deal, right? And so just using default options, they couldn't even come close to solving a problem of the size. And so this whole paper is 20 pages all about how they very, very cleverly exploited the structure of the specific problem they're trying to solve uh, in order to make this tractable. Um, and it's super interesting if you're into this kind of thing. Um, great. So that's it. Um, 
All the stuff from this talk is on GitHub, uh, the slides and the notebook, if you're interested in that. Um, if you have any more questions, um, we might have a few minutes here. Um, feel free to, uh, to catch me in person. I'm on the PyOhio Slack. Uh, you can uh, reach out to me there. Uh, you can email me. Um, and then finally, uh, MobiKit is hiring. Um, so uh, uh, if you're interested in uh, software that makes data useful and or interested in the mobility space, uh, then I'm happy to talk to you more about that. Uh, and that is all. Thank you very much.